China's military has a brand new toy, and it's literally straight out of a James Bond movie. It's called the Hunting Eagle Strike Gyrocopter. In 2022, China released footage showing the Hunting Eagle, equipped with four anti-tank guided missiles and a sensor system to guide those onto their target. It's the military equivalent of a flying monkey attack. This is brand new and has a lot of military experts scratching their heads. So what in God's good name is really going on here? What explains this seemingly bizarre decision by China to start using gyrocopters in their otherwise modern army? And what are some of the pros and cons of using these assets on the modern battlefield? Why doesn't the United States military have one? Probably because everyone would be getting DUIs in this. And finally, what is a gyrocopter and where did it come from? But first, this video is only possible thanks to our partner Raycon. Raycon doesn't outsource the design and development of their earbuds. They have a team of incredible audio engineers who have experience working for brands like Bose and Peloton. Often you hear the words affordable tech being associated with lower expectations, but I was shocked at how clear and refined the call quality is. The earbuds have a tap function allowing you to easily control the volume. I use them to listen to podcasts and audiobooks all the time. I'm guilty of losing wireless headphones all the time, so it's nice to know it's not too expensive to replace these. Plus, they're way more comfortable to run with and have a better snug fit compared to other brands. This is thanks to their custom gel tips. Raycon Everyday Earbuds have eight hours of playtime battery life. Raycons have over 50,000 five-star reviews and an easy and free return guarantee. So click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash task and purpose to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash task and purpose or click the link in the description to get 15% off your order. Gyrocopters have been used by military and police forces in the past, mostly in reconnaissance and surveillance missions. The Hunting Strike Eagle Eurocopter is made by the Shangxi Boji Special Vehicle Manufacturing Company. To my surprise, they have a website that I could actually visit, and I learned they produce a lot of China's lightly armored vehicles that are mostly used for anti-riot police work. So that could be a possible hint as to the purpose of the gyrocopter as more of a domestic asset than anything else. The company began work on the vehicle in 2014, and some photos of the aircraft came out as early as 2016, but the public didn't really get a first look at the Hunting Eagle until 2019, when they were first showcased in a military parade, celebrating the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. The good folks of the internet have been quick to mock China's gyrocopters. One photo showing three soldiers on a gyrocopter with one holding a rocket launcher was relentlessly mocked online. Some level-headed Redditors pointed out that firing such a weapon in flight would likely damage the aircraft and burn the other passengers to a crisp. The overall reaction to China's gyrocopter has mostly been confused laughter. Okay, is this capability even real or is China just running a psyop on me? But to give the devil its due, there are some potential upsides to using a gyrocopter in a modern military. The first and most obvious is that they are cheap to make. The estimated cost of these types of gyrocopters is as low as 40,000 Chinese yuan, or about $5,500. This is significantly cheaper than any other manned aircraft, and significantly cheaper than trying to build it yourself gyrocopter kits sold in the United States, which go for like 18,000 bucks. Gyrocopters are also relatively easy to operate. It's it's estimated that special forces can use hunting eagles proficiently after just 10 hours of training. The gyrocopters are small, but they're also quite nimble. They can perform short takeoffs and land with high approach angles in small areas. They're easily concealed and easy to transport for reconnaissance missions. They can also be used for border patrols as well as search and rescue operations. The Chinese People's Armed Police have already been using gyrocopters for aerial surveillance and security assistance. Gyrocopters typically travel slow and low to the ground. This may seem like an obvious disadvantage, but their small radar and thermal signatures do make these vehicles harder to detect. Even as military technology advances, some countries have success striking sophisticated enemies with slow, low-flying drones. Last December, Ukraine successfully struck an airbase deep inside Russia, reportedly using low-flying Soviet-era drones. Now, I'm not saying these would be a great asset in a high-intensity conflict, but you'd be lying if you said you weren't a little curious at how these would stand up against tanks. According to a rough translation to the original video of the armed hunting eagles, the gyrocopters are meant to support ground forces, as well as hunt and kill tanks. There's also mention of some effort to quiet the aircraft. 
The average gyrocopter is quieter than the traditional helicopter, although it's still estimated to be about as loud as a motorcycle. There is an option to shut off the engine on a gyrocopter to glide silently, although this can't be sustained for long. There has been speculation that the hunting eagle could be deployed along the Sino-Indian border for surveillance purposes or to combat Indian tanks and other vehicles if the situation called for it. Clashes along this border have been happening for years, and the hunting eagle's agility could be specifically useful in this terrain, which includes the Himalayan mountains. Others have speculated that China could successfully use the low-flying and short-range hunting eagle against their neighbors in Taiwan, and the hunting eagle could provide China a less aggressive means of surveilling the island, and the distance from China to Taiwan could fit within the hunting eagle's range. But I mean, that would be pretty ridiculous. Hopefully those pilots would have some road flares to light up and chuck out the side in case they got locked on by Taiwan's anti-air defense. The gyrocopters could also be used for surveillance of civilians and riot control. It seems silly to use a gyrocopter against an opposing military, but I think these are actually meant to be more of a police-style role vehicle. Civilians most likely wouldn't shoot a gyrocopter out of the sky, so they would actually be useful in this regard. When you hear about people afraid of unmarked government black helicopters surveilling them in the sky, this isn't exactly what they think of, but maybe they should. Don't worry though, my CIA handler tells me that's just paranoid thinking. So there are some ways that China could use their gyrocopters in the military, but there are also a lot of downsides to doing so. The biggest knock on gyrocopters is that there is honestly just better technology out there. First and foremost, helicopters. Gyrocopters can't take off or descend in a straight line, they can't hover, they're slower, they fly lower, and most of them leave the crew completely unprotected from enemy fire. Just look at them, the hunting eagle wouldn't protect its crew from a bird, let alone a bullet. And although it's new to China's People's Liberation Army, Sean Connery was flying it as James Bond over 50 years ago. What makes the hunting eagle a gyrocopter as opposed to a helicopter is that the rotor blades on top of the aircraft are not actually powered by an engine. The unpowered rotor uses air flowing upward across it to make it rotate. The Hunting Eagle's forward thrust comes from a propeller powered by a Rotax 914 four-cylinder, 115 horsepower engine fixed to the back of the aircraft it's in what's called a pusher configuration. The Hunting Eagle's max speed is around 99 miles per hour, and its average cruising speed is between 62 and 75 miles per hour. Even the modern Hunting Eagle needs at least 60 feet of runway to take off. The aircraft comes in different configurations that can carry one, two, or three passengers. According to the company's website, the two-passenger version carrying the anti-tank guided missiles in the video weighs about 640 pounds empty and has a maximum gross weight of about 1,235 pounds. That leaves just under 600 pounds for missiles, that's its payload capacity, and crew and whatever else. I'm told they're encouraged to pack a light lunch. The Hunting Eagle can hold around 18 gallons worth of fuel and has a range of just under 250 miles. It can fly as high as 4,500 meters or about 2.8 miles into the sky. I know this isn't exactly catnip for all you gearheads out there, but the Hunting Eagle is a light aircraft by definition. One guy on TikTok demonstrated how light his gyrocopter is by pushing it around on a one-wheeled skateboard. It's not exactly the type of aircraft you'd expect to see from a country in the middle of what is stated as a mission to modernize its army. The last time an autogyro was in the news in America was in 2015, when a guy built his own autogyro and landed it on the east lawn of the US Capitol building as a form of protest. The YouTube video is kind of funny. This was a goofy story at the time, but it also gives us an idea as to why China might be interested in using autogyros 80 years after the United States and the rest of the world gave up on them. The guy who flew his ultralight autogyro onto the Capitol lawn in 2015 got further than he should have. And that's most likely because the ultralight aircraft, like the autogyro, are harder to detect via radar. Drug smugglers have used ultralight aircraft to cross borders without detection for quite some time. It became such a problem that in 2012, the US Department of Homeland Security gave a $100 million contract to a company developing radar specifically to detect ultralight aircraft. 
This may be a clue as to how China would use hunting eagle strike gyrocopters in their modern day military. Seeing the military videos of the hunting eagle in action, it's almost cute. It's like hearing a toddler use swear words. It's kind of funny, but slightly worrying. The truth is China isn't the only country to use gyrocopters in their military. It's just been a while since anyone has done it seriously. So is this a Chinese invention originally, or did someone else think of this beautiful innovation? The gyrocopter was invented back in 1923 by the Spanish inventor and engineer Juan de la Sierva. So he developed the auto gyro, which used an airplane fuselage with a forward mounted propeller and engine and an unpowered rotor mounted on a mast with horizontal and vertical stabilizers. But maybe more importantly, he laid the groundwork for the helicopter. The cyclic pitch control made for a much smoother ride, and this articulated rotor blade design is still the basis for many modern helicopter rotors. By 1925, the autogyro was reliable enough that De La Sierra began demonstrating the aircraft in France, England, and the United States. He tested the aircraft for the British Air Ministry, and even flew it over the English Channel to France. One autogyro crashed in the UK in 1927, when a rotor blade broke mid-flight. This prompted De La Sierra to invent drag hinges, which allowed the rotor blade to drag back or pivot forward slightly. This was another step towards the fully articulated hinges used on most modern helicopters. Throughout the next decade, companies in Britain, Germany, France, Russia, Japan, and the United States bought the rights to De La Sierra's invention, and over 500 gyrocopters were built throughout the world. Autogyros were built for multiple armies after that, and a version of De La Sierra's aircraft became the first rotor aircraft used by the United States military. The Soviet Red Army Force used armed Kamov A-7 autogyros in the Winter War of 1939. These Kamov A7s were the first autogyros designed for direct combat armed with a 7.62mm PV-1 machine gun, RS-82 rockets, and Fab 100 bombs. The gyrocopter had its moment, but as the 1930s rolled on, huge improvements to helicopters made the gyrocopters less practical. Most militaries, including the US military, shifted their focus towards building helicopters which could take off from a standstill and carry heavier loads. Gyrocopters are also more susceptible to what's called ground resonance, which basically means that when the gyrocopter hits the ground hard, its rotor blades could get thrown off balance, causing them to malfunction. The helicopter's ability to hover gave it another leg over the gyrocopter. Basically, the gyrocopter was outclassed by the helicopter way back in the 1930s. The gyrocopter is mostly remembered as a stepping stone towards the helicopter but the gyrocopter did see some limited action by both sides in World War II. Gyrocopters were used mainly for reconnaissance and surveillance in World War II, and they're still kind of that's their main use today. The Germans used and developed a small rotor kite called the FA-30 that was based on the autogyro. They towed this aircraft behind U-boats and used it for aerial surveillance. Britain used an Avro rotor autogyro to calibrate coastal radar stations during and after the Battle of Britain. The Soviets used their Kamov A-7 to form the first autogyro artillery spotting aircraft squadron. Meanwhile, Japan developed the Ka-1 autogyro, which was used mostly for reconnaissance, artillery spotting, and anti-submarine use. Some of the Ka-1s were outfitted with small depth charges, which reportedly successfully sank at least one submarine. The US had what was called the Kellett XO-60, but these autogyros struggled in flight tests, particularly during landings. The US ultimately gave up on the project. There were some developments pertaining to the autogyros after World War II. Dr. Igor Benson, a Russian immigrant in the United States, was inspired when he saw a captured German FA-330. He developed the push configuration model, which became the standard. This is also the configuration used by the Hunter Eagle in China. A British man named Ken Wallace developed the even smaller Wallace autogyro in the 1960s. His designs were used in military training, police reconnaissance, and searches for the Loch Ness Monster. And yes, this was the design flown by James Bond himself in You Only Live Twice. The United States Air Force briefly entertained the idea of using the autogyro as a discretionary descent vehicle, or DDV. 
They called this auto gyro the X25, and the idea was that this was a one-time use auto gyro that would be kept inside the pilot's seat of a combat aircraft. Then, if the pilot needed to eject, the blades of the auto gyro would automatically deploy and give them a way to steer themselves to safety with more precision than a parachute. They gave up on the idea shortly after Vietnam, and no tests were ever conducted. There are reportedly over 1,000 autogyros being used by military and law enforcement. Autogyros were tested for police surveillance in Tumball, Texas. They tested the autogyros mainly because they were significantly cheaper to buy and operate than helicopters. The autogyros have been used in Kurdistan, Iraq, as a cheap way to monitor and prevent terrorist encroachments. It was reported in 2014 that Turkey and Egypt bought gyrocopters for surveillance and border security purposes from an Austrian company called Trixie Aviation. And at the end of the day, these Hunting Eagle Strike gyrocopters are just a small part of the PLA's ever-growing arsenal. They have jets and helicopters and drones, just about everything else you'd expect from a modern military, so why are they putting missiles on the sides of gyrocopters? Honestly, maybe they just like James Bond movies. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. If you enjoyed this video, please check this one out.